that example one, 50,000 is invested for 10 years at an interest rate of 15% per annum symbol interest. What I'm going to recommend, guys, is whenever you face a situation like this, I get my students to always do this, to write down the A, the P, the yeah, I, yeah. and the N, because then you know what you're dealing with, what the knowns and the unknowns. Let's have a look. Here we go. A is equal to, P is equal to, I is equal to, and N equal to. Okay, what do we know, Nelson? What's the first thing we know? Right. We know 50,000 as P. That's and then good. we know 10 years as number of years. And then we know 15 as the interest rate, as which comes decimal. as decimal. Always. As a decimal. What don't we know? Then we need A, okay. which is the future value. Right. Now, the first question, calculate the accumulated amount or future value of this beautiful investment. There's the right, formula. Now you know the formula. We apply it. Substitution. P, 50,000 as we have listed those. You put them in the formula. I and N substituted in there, and guess what? 125,000 Rand. Yeah. I don't know about you, that is a lot. Can you imagine? 50, you know, started with 50,000, eh? And then what do we get? 125,000 Rand. I think oh, that's pretty cool after 10 years. Yeah. Okay, now there are other things called inflation and the tax, man. You and know, I know about those things. <laughs> Um, and we're going to have to bring those in later on. But the important thing to realize is that you made money. Okay, yeah. your money worked for you. And we got 125,000 Rand. Now let's, let's look at the next part of the question. Calculate the simple interest you received. That's the money you got for doing nothing. I like this, Nelson. Interest received, 125,000. Look at that, the 50,000. the original yeah. amount. Then you get in 75,000. Oh, man, 75,000 Rand. That's, I mean, think about that. You did nothing. You don't want to put your money in the bed, uh, under the bed. Okay, that's the worst thing you can do. Let's look at number C. Okay, calculate the simple interest received each year. Well, as Nelson pointed out, very importantly, that you're going to get the same interest every year. So 75,000 divided by 10 gives you? 7,500 per year. Absolutely. Very, very good calculation, hey, to, to show you how the power of savings, that's so important. If you can save money from a young age, you're going to be very wealthy by the, by the time you're our age. Okay, let's look at another example. Right. Example two, how much was invested five years ago? If the value of the investment is currently 7,000, the interest rate was 8% per annum symbol interest. Very, very important now. Now we're taking this situation in parts now. A, P, I, and N. Always write that down. Okay, Nelson, now this becomes interesting. This becomes very, very interesting. Now what I want to do, people, I just want to draw a little bit of a timeline. It's, it's not on the, the screen, but I'm going to do it on paper, and I just want to show you something quickly if we actually go on to some writing paper here. What we know is, if you think about this carefully, it said there, the money we have now is currently 7,000 Rand. Okay, we want to know what was the investment worth back then in time. Okay, so in fact, the present value is a little bit back in time. So let's have a look at a timeline. I'm going to encourage you to draw timelines in financial maths, but have a look here. We know that our value of money is at the moment how much? 7,000. Yeah. 7,000 Rand notice, it's five years, yeah. but also the interest rate is 8%, very important, divide by 100, here's your decimal. Yeah. Okay, now the question is, what was invested here? What yeah. was saved at that point there? And, and you probably agree it's going to be a smaller amount, and the money, that small amount is going to grow to there. 7, 000, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, to the example and fill in the missing bits and pieces. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's look at the example. Right, N, it's five years, it's, it's given. And then A, it's 7,000, the current amount. And then I is 0 0.08, and then we need P. Okay. And then we put the formula here. Then substitution, 7,000, is equal to P into one plus 0 0.08 times five. Now, then you work out the inside, the brackets, then you divide by 1.4, which size then P is 5,000. 5,000 Rand. 
back then, five years ago, you invested the 5,000 Rand and it grew to 7,000 Rand at that interest rate. People, you must keep it a decimal because if you don't, you are gonna, well, I would love to be in a bank that, that, that doesn't work with a decimal. Jeez, we'd be multi-millionaires. So very, very important to work with the decimal version. Okay, one final example. Right, example three, an amount of 1,200 accumulates to 2,600 after three years. Find the interest rate if the investment and symbol interest. Right, A, P, I, N. We need to fill this. And then realize that P is 1,200. A grows to 2,600. N after three years, then we need the interest rate. Okay, now this is a little bit more difficult, this mathematics. But again, notice we, we, you know, we were, we're given normally three and then we have to find one. But let's have a look at how we find the I. Right, now the formula again, we make substitution, then multiply 1,200. What? 1, What's very, very important here, guys, is remember distribution. You're going to multiply 1,200 by the 1, and then obviously yeah. 1,200 yeah. multiplied by that 3 is 3, 6, so yeah. that's important. Yeah. Right, now simplifying the right, I8 0.38. Remember, this is still in decimal form, but... Remember, I is R over 100. Therefore, the rate must be 38.9. So very important, if you got the I as a decimal, as Nelson pointed out there, what you do is you just multiply by 100, 100. move the decimal yeah. twice, you get your R. If you give an R, simply divide by 100. If you give given the I, like it's in, this, cal in yeah. this calculation, then what you do is you simply multiply by 100. 100 These are great examples. Yeah. Guys, pause the DVD and have a bash at Activity 1 and we'll see you in a few minutes. Cheers. Welcome back guys, I hope you enjoyed that activity. Let's look at another important financial principle called the higher purchase agreement. Now, when the moment you buy furniture or you know iPods or whatever, and you go in and you, you take out a higher purchase loan, be very, very careful. You are gonna pay a lot of interest and you're gonna lose a lot of money. It is far better to do it cash. So let's let's have a look at some examples relating to this, and um, you're going to see. Be very careful. Rather go in with cash. Um, higher purchase is very very dodgy, and we'll comment on this later on as we go on. Let's just quickly see what higher purchase is about. Right, a higher purchase agreement, which is normally called HP, it's a short term loan. The interest paid on a higher purchase loan its simple interest, and it is calculated on the full value of the loan over the repayment period. Normally, a deposit is paid initially and the balance is paid over a short term period. Okay, so what happens is you want to buy this iPod or this laptop and what happens is they normally ask for a deposit. It could be 10% yeah. yeah. or 20%. 15%, no. So for example, if the say the laptop is 14,000 Rand and they want a deposit of 1,000 Rand, yeah. then what you do is you pay your deposit, so you have to pay 13,000 Rand. Okay, and of course, simple interest comes into this. So let's have a look at the first example. 